history books got it all wrong, so I come to you with a song. In 1810, con el gran grito de pasión, se levantaron con razón. Black and brown fighting together on the day I'll always remember. Sandra Cisneros was born on December 20th, 1954, to Alfredo Cisneros del Moral and Elvira Cordero Anguiano. Alfredo Cisneros came from a wealthy Mexican family background that was less economically stable by the time he was born. He illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexican border after failing to pursue a college career that was encouraged by his father, Sandra Cisneros' grandfather. In fear of suffering his father's wrath and disapproval, he illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexican border after failing to pursue a college career. Alfredo eventually joined the U.S. Armed Forces during World War II in the year 1939 through 1945, which eventually gained him U.S. citizenship and legal entry into the United States. Sandra's mother, Elvira, grew up in a poor Mexican-American neighborhood with Spanish-speaking parents slowly assimilating the language and ways of the host country. Now tell us a little bit about your mother. <laughs> She was a very feisty, strong, and independent woman. It's too bad that she was born when she was, because I think that women were nurtured so much they were made helpless. On the other hand, I'm sure if it weren't for her, my brothers and I would not be the creative individuals we are. So in a sense, we're living her dreams for her. Sandra's parents met at a dance in Chicago, where, his, where her father eventually made a permanent home in. And her mother was initially turned off by his arrogant attitude and boastful descriptions of wealth which he left back in Mexico. Well, my father came from a middle-class family and here he was with Chicanos. He was trying to show off. He would tell my mother all these things, how much money he made. She always said she couldn't stand him because he was such a show-off. I don't know why she married him. They did in fact get married and Sandra became the only daughter of six siblings. Alfredo worked as an upholsterer to support the family, while Elvira became a housewife. Because her father and brothers expected her to follow traditional gender roles in which males were always in control, she felt at times like she had seven fathers. I'm the only daughter in a family of six sons. That explains everything. Sandra's love for literature and writing developed from a very young age. She credits her mother for instilling in her love of reading. Elvira made sure her daughter got a library card that would allow her to check books out of the public library and develop reading habits at an early age. Because of my mother, I spent my childhood afternoons in my room reading instead of in the kitchen. I never had to change my little brother's diapers. I never had to cook a meal alone, nor was I ever sent to do laundry. Certainly, I had my share of homework to do as well as we all did, but I don't recall it interfering with my homework or my reading habits. I'm here today because my mother let me stay in my room reading and studying, perhaps because she didn't want me to inherit her sadness and her rolling pin. Her parents settled in Chicago's north side, an area largely populated by Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, and Mexican Americans. The encouragement Cisnero receives to pursue reading came hand in hand with the family's move to its first home on North Campbell Avenue in Humboldt Park, Chicago. This also inspired the creation of The House on Mango Street, which is Cisnero's best-selling novel. It was an ugly little house, bright red as if it had been holding its breath, a small two-story bungalow in a Puerto Rican neighborhood on the north side. This move to a permanent home ended our nomadic existence for a while. And this was important, not only for my emotional security, but because it placed me in a neighborhood, a real one with plenty of friends and neighbors that would evolve into the eccentric characters of the house on Mango Street. Sandra claims to have written her first poem at the age of 10. Although this may be the case, when she attended Josephinium High School, an all-girl Catholic school, she began taking her writing more seriously. She became the editor of the school literary magazine and published some of her first poems. This caused her to isolate herself from social circles, especially the young dating scene in her school. This prompted her into the realm of reading and writing. I was ready to sacrifice everything in the name of love, to do anything, even risk my own life. But thankfully, there were no takers. After high school, she enrolled in the English department at Loyola University Chicago in 1972 on scholarship. 
She was the only Chicana enrolled at the time in the English department. As a second generation Mexican American, a college education was an unusual path for Cisneros to follow in the patriarchal upbringing in which she was raised. Upon graduating from LUC in 1976 and following the advice of supportive teachers, Cisneros enrolled in the Master of Fine Arts program in Creative Writing at the University of Iowa, moving away from the, for the first time from her home and neighborhood. In 1978, Cisneros graduated from U of I at the age of 24 with a Master's in Fine Arts degree in Creative Writing. She then returned to Chicago Degree in hand, eager to further develop her writing skills and share her educational experience with others. She accepted a position at the Latino Youth Alternative High School in Chicago where she worked as a part-time teacher, arts coordinator, editor, counselor, interim director, disciplinarian, and even sometimes janitor. The kids she worked with came from dysfunctional homes and violent surroundings. They believed they had few if any, opportunities of getting ahead in life, much less of leaving their barrios. Much of her interaction with and connection to these inner city youths would later translate into the material for her first publications. From this experience of listening to young Latinos whose problems were so great, I felt helpless. I was moved to do something to change their lives, ours, mine. Cisneros' writing became a tribute to her students' tenacious spirit and endurance, despite the circumstances in which they lived. During the time she worked for the Latino Youth Alternative High School, Cisneros gave poetry readings in public spaces and local coffee houses. She soon caught the attention of the Poetry Society of America. Her poetry was featured alongside distinguished American poets such as Carl Sandburg and Gwendolyn Brook. Her first book was published in 1980, called Bad Boys, with the help of a fellow Chicano poet named Gary Soto, who recognized her as the new voice of the Chicano-Chicana poetic scene. She then moved on from the Latino Youth Alternative High School and accepted a new position at LUC, where she worked as an administrative assistant recruiting low-income and minority students into programs at the university. Sandra C. Snuddles has a total of 10 published works that include The House on Mango Street and books of short stories and poetry. She has received a vast number of awards that include the National Endowment for the Arts Fellow, received the American Book Award, the Land and Foundation Literary Award, and many, many more. Sandra has stated in reference to her art, if I were asked what it is I write about, I would have to say I write about those ghosts inside that haunt me, that will not let me sleep, of that which even memory does not like to mention. Perhaps later there will be a time to write by inspiration. In the meantime, in my writing as well as in that of other Chicanas and other women, there is a necessary phase of dealing with the ghosts and voices most urgently haunting us day by day. <laughs>